Hi, my name is David McNeil, for anyone who doesn't know me, and this is my senior exhibition, Multimedia Chess, A Journey of Wood, Steel, and Clay. Now, I chose this project because, as a little kid, my mom told me about, you know, before she adopted me. She was a woodworker, she did timber framing, including she did the bus stop by the Weststone Station and the Arbor. Um, at Agway in Brattleboro. She was slate roofer and actually repaired the stone church after it was struck by lightning, which is pretty cool. And I really admired her for all of the stuff that she did. So when I had the amazing opportunity to come to Putney, I went really crazy on the arts. I took photography, I took freshman um, ceramics, and I've also done blacksmithing. I've done woodworking with Brian, and I've also done printmaking and sculpture and welding. Um, I really enjoyed doing blacksmithing and woodworking, which I actually didn't do until this past year. And I knew that I could combine those when making a chest, because um, chests need hard work and you can blacksmith those out. And I figured this was something that I could take with me as I go off to college, kind of to represent me becoming independent. And I figured it's always good to have a set of dishware with you. Um, so I decided to use my four years of ceramic skills to make three different sets of ceramics. So I made four bowls, four plates, and um, four cups. I'm going to chop this up into the three parts of my project, which was the ceramic sets, the chest, and the forging of my hardware. So in the first week, I started with my cups. And I used a cup that I had made previously in a salt-fired kiln with a local potter named Walter Solinsky. And so I used that as my, my base design. And using a ruler and calibers, I copied that design eight times, and I was able to make eight cups that somewhat matched, um, but not quite. And they were a little smaller than I wanted to. And when I went to go trim them, uh, it all went heck. Um, most of them didn't make it through the trimming process because I let them dry out too much, which can, when you go to trim them, cause the pieces to crack and they're not going to trim very smoothly. Um, and that's a picture of the foot. It cracked because it was too dry. But that's it after trimming, which is taking off the excess clay from the bottom of the pieces. Um, I was able to get three of my pieces, but they were kind of small and they didn't quite match. Um, however, in the second week, I was able to go back and I was able to make a whole bunch more cups which were a little bigger and they all matched much better. So I'm actually kind of glad my first set didn't work out because I was able to get a better result the second time. Um, I was also a lot more careful when I was trimming them so they didn't dry out and they were trimmed successfully which I was super happy about. So I was able to get five cups out of the um, eight that I made that went well. The next week, I set out to make my plates, which I had just actually started practicing a few weeks previously, and Tita actually was the person who showed me how to make plates, so thank you, Tita. Um, and I used a ruler, and one thing that I had forgotten to account for in my first set of cups was the shrinkage, which happens when they dry out in both the bisque and the gas firing. So that's why I threw them to 10 and a half, because I wanted them to be roughly nine inches when they were done. Each um, ball of clay weighed four pounds, so that's a whole like three and probably three quarters there. I uh, lost some in the trimming process. And then I trimmed them all. This is the one that I didn't trim correctly because my trimming tool slipped, which can happen sometimes. So I went to fix it. My uh, foot was much too small, and that probably would have just cracked off anyways in the firing because it was so narrow. Um, but I was able to get four plates, and I put my maker's mark, which I actually don't have a picture of, that's all right, but it's a pine tree. I came up with that about four years ago. So then in the fifth week, I was able to go ahead and make um, uh, six bowls. One of them did not fit in the frame. But <laughs> But they were more of a flared and kind of flatter shape than I was going for, so they're better suited for salads than the soup bowls, which I wanted. 
Um, I was actually able to trim five of them successfully, and they went through the bisque. But when they came out, I just wasn't really happy with the shape of them. So I made, I came in on a Saturday afternoon. I took the bus up here, and I biked up here from the general store, and I spent the whole afternoon, and I made um, six more of my bowls, which were a much more rounder shape than I was much happier with. Um, one thing that did happen with my bowls, once I had been able to trim them successfully, um, was that they cracked when they came out of the kiln. Um, I realized after I had made two more, which also cracked, that I had not compressed the bottom of my pieces enough, which can happen when you have soft clay, which I was using. Um, it was also tricky because my pieces, I had to make more pieces after my pieces had been bisque. I had to estimate the shrinkage rate a little bit, um, but I was able to do that, which was pretty awesome. Um, in the last week, I then waxed the bottom of my pieces because everything had come out of the bisque, and this was to prevent any glaze from sticking on them because for um, anyone who hasn't done ceramics, what will happen is the glaze will kind of become liquid when it goes through the gas kiln, kind of, um, and it will run down your piece and it will stick to your shelf, and the piece will then break off the shelf and be completely ruined. <laughs> so I didn't want that to happen. So I carefully waxed all my pieces, and then even then, two of my bowls, which were my extra bowls luckily, did stick to the shelf, so it can still happen even if you're careful. Um, I was really happy though how my pieces came out. I glazed them all in a similar manner and with a white on the inside and then a uh, blue glaze and a black glaze on the bottom. And one thing that I had learned when I tested this on my first three cups was that that overlap created a really dark black line, which I really liked. That was an overlap color. Because certain glazes, when you overlap them, can come out like looking pretty bad. So I liked that color that came out. Um, if I was going to do this again, I learned a lot, but if I was to do this again, I would have tried to make at least three times as many pieces, because I was really lucky that I was able to get four of each set. Um, I was able to get exactly four, so I would have made a lot more because I lost a whole bunch through the process. So if I made three times as much, I would be able to lose like two pieces for each step of the process. Um, I also would have made the edges of my pieces a little thicker, which would protect them more from chipping um, or possibly breaking later or the glaze chipping off later down the road. And my plates came out a little flatter than I wanted to, so I would have made them have a bit more of a cup to them and a broader rim. Um, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and even though it was really challenging, it was really fun, uh, especially because I've never made sets before. So this was the first time I've ever made matching sets. The chest. Um, so I started out with this very simple three-dimensional design with just my external measurements. And I then went and I milled all of my pieces, starting with these red oak planks, which we're pretty sure all came from the same tree. And they all came from the Putney School, though. So they're all cut and milled here at Putney. And it's made out of red oak. So I had to first, I had to rip the pieces down so they would fit through our joiner. And then I had to edge and face join them and then put them through a planer so that they are completely flat and I had a square flat surface to work off of. I then clamped them together because I needed double the width than our joiner had, so I had to glue them edge to edge overnight. And I then ripped them down again to my final cut and I then planed them lastly so that they would be uh, the right width I wanted, which was half an inch. And I quickly realized that half an inch for a chest is very silly. Um, I was afraid that they would warp, or that they might break, or that they wouldn't be strong enough, and it also probably just would have looked strange, um, too, just aesthetically. So I went back to the drawing board, and I made another design. I wasn't happy with this design, because it looked very odd. Um, so then at the end of my third week, 
I was finally able to get this design, which was my final design with all my internal measurements and all my hardware on it and everything that I would need to put on my chest. Um, as you can see, my second design has a drawer and a shelf in the middle rather than them running the whole length and it has slots for the plates so the plates aren't sliding around in the drawer, which I realize would probably be a very bad idea. I then milled out the rest of my pieces that I would need. Um, so I milled out all my sides, I milled out the top and the bottom and the slats for my chest. Um, in the fifth week, I then was able to cut them all down to the right size, which I later realized my design was slightly off because I had miscut my shelf, my drawer sides, and my slats, um, which I was luckily able to fix using the sides that I previously milled out in my first week. Um, I then routed out my dovetails with a jig from Brian, thank you Brian, and I was able to get these done in the sixth week, and then I cut my dados out, and I was then able to dry fit and assemble my piece together. This is the process I had to do. So there's the pieces all laid out. I then had to tape my dovetails off because I needed to put my finish on the inside before I assembled it, and you can't get the finish where you have the glue, because otherwise the glue won't stick. I then assembled it all together with help from Bryce and Brian, and this is it assembled, uh, clamped, and I clamped it overnight. I then had this mess to deal with, um, and I had to sand it all off. I then filled in all my gaps with a mixture of sawdust and glue so that none of the gaps were visible, which I then had to sand down again. And I put my finish of Danish oil on it. I did three coats in total, and I had to sand in between to make the coat smooth. I then cut my half line dovetails for my drawer, and I did the dados for my drawer, and assembled my drawer, and let it sit overnight. The next morning, I sanded down the sides until it fit into the slot, you can see. Um, but I realized that I had cut my drawer too long. So I had to cut the back off, and I had to do uh, what's called a butt joint, where I had to sink the screws into the side of the drawer, and then I covered them with walnut plugs so that you can't see the screws. I then sanded that down and put my finish of Danish oil on it. Lastly, I then put all of my hardware on and I marked out where my hardware needed to be with tape and a pencil and then I pilot drilled them all and then I took the tape off and I test fitted all my pieces on where I realized that my top, which I had rabbited, was slightly too big um, so I expanded my rabbit so that it would fit back smoothly into my chest. I learned a whole bunch during this process, especially because I haven't done woodworking a lot, and this was an extremely complex process. So I definitely learned that you need to make more sketches. It's always good, you can never have enough sketches. Um, so next time I do a project like that, I will definitely do that. And um, one thing that I did was I misdrilled where my holes needed to be on my hardware. So I had to drill extra holes and then cover up those holes with like screws that I cut in half so you can't see them because um, I hadn't thought of where the gap for my top would be and where the rabbit would be so then the screws would be poking through which you can't really have. Um, I also would have dry fitted my chest before I assembled it in my drawer uh, into my chest to make sure that it was the right length. The last part of my project was the forging out of my hardware. So in the first two weeks, I was able to get my top hinges, which are the really long ones, um, and I tapered them and I rounded them off at the ends to make them look nice. I then made my bottom hinges, which have what's called a fishtail design on the bottom, because um, they didn't need to be as fancy and they didn't need to be um, as long because they're not decorative. So the long ones are long because they're more of a decorative hinge. I then made my handle plates, um, which I tapered 
the edges of so that they would kind of blend smoothly with the chest. Um, and then I made the eyes, which are the little round things the handles are held in, and drilled holes for them in my chest. I lastly made the handles, which were really tricky to match, but I was able to do it after a lot of tweaking. I then tapered the ends of the handle so they would swivel smoothly in the eyes. I then put them in the eyes carefully to make sure that they were centered and welded the eyes to the back of the plate so the welds are not visible. And my last step of this process was um, making my latch, which is in the middle there, which I used the same fishtail design for out of extra that I had for my hinges. And then I used quarter inch round, which I hammered square. Um, I then drilled out all my holes carefully using a ruler. Later, what I realized that I had misdrilled some of them. Um, and I then used a method called stink ragging, which is where you heat the pieces so they're really hot, but they're not actually glowing or they're not, they don't have any color to them. And then you rub a rag soaked in oiled linseed oil so that it will leave a black finish so that they're all the same color, which I also did for the heads of my screws. Now, I learned a whole bunch during my process. I learned you always have to have patience because something's always going to be, go wrong. I could do this again and something will still go wrong. Um, so you have to have a lot of patience. You have to work slowly. Um, you have to put a lot of time into your project, which is something I should have done a little more of. But I got so much out of this project. I learned a lot more about woodworking and blacksmithing and the finer details of doing ceramics. And I'm super proud of what I was able to accomplish. Um, but planning is always good. As Bryce and Brian said, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian, Bryce, Naomi, Roger, and my evaluators, Tita and Keith. photos that I have of my final pieces, which you can also go see in the gallery. Available here, 
Um, that was what we had available. We have a lot of red oak up there. Uh, way at the back. Woodworking where you are starting with your own plans is much more difficult. Did you go into this process with the intention of, I want to design, or did you look ever at like a fine woodworking magazine to see the plans that you can get for a piece? I didn't look at any designs. Um, I looked at some of the work my mom's done, which was kind of inspired by Shaker uh, furniture, so it's kind of Shaker-esque, but I didn't look at any designs before. Avi. Yeah, um, I mean, it was difficult to make sure that everything was going to like fit in properly. So like flattening down the pieces of hardware, for example, enough that they would sit flush with the chest was difficult. Um, and I, that was one thing I wish I could have done was have a little more time tweaking those because um, it was a little difficult getting them on. So like none of this was very flexible is the problem, but so. Yeah, I would say just like kind of the inflexibility of things. I definitely got very frustrated by mistakes. Um, Bryce can attest to that. I was very tempted when my drawer was too long to just <laughs> break in. Because um, it was the final thing I had to do pretty much, and I messed it up. Um, but I was able to fix it. Um, in the moment, I would say it was not so composed, but afterwards, I was like, okay, I can fix this. <laughs> 